Greetings guys and gals and welcome back to Let's Play King's Quest V Absence Makes the Heart Go Yonder In the last episode we, uh, well, started up the game, obviously, and uh, it was a long intro <laughs> That took longer than I thought, I looked back and it was actually 22 minutes the first episode I didn't know it was that long, so I apologize um, But what do we have here? The Swarthy, uh, Swarthy Hog Inn. We'll be going to the inn a lot later in the game. Uh, we don't have to worry about it so much right now. Actually, if we go in there right now, we'll actually die. <laughs> so I would not recommend uh, going into the inn right away. Uh, but what else happened? Last time we discovered that um, our castle and family have been taken by a wizard named Mordak. We don't know much about who Mordak is right now or why he hates us. But I'm sure we'll find out later on in the game. Oh boy, we got a bear. A bear. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I had to use that. Uh-oh. A large bear seems to be very interested in the honey inside the old tree. That bear may be a little bit dangerous. Just a, uh, hunch. Let's go talk to the... Graham uh, should fellow. be very careful around a big old bear. The big old bear. Can we talk to the big old bear? The bear is too intent on the honey to listen to Graham. I see. Well, let's uh, walk up to him. I'm sure he's a harmless little fellow. I mean, he's just a bear. I mean, what could he possibly do? Most bears are cuddly little creatures. You know, we all have stuffies of them and everything. And then, uh, you know, how bad could it possibly be? Uh, can we talk to the fine chap? I think we ought to maybe use a hand on the stick, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> the bear freaking duck, uh, Dex Graham in the face. Tisk, tisk. Graham should know better than to feed the bears. I'm sorry, but that just that sequence is just so silly. Like he punches him, like of all things. You think he'd like claw at him or something? But anyway, um, to get around the bear, which we're gonna have to do, we can use this old rotting fish we picked up in the town. Phew! This smelly old fish is disgusting. It is, so let's get rid of it, shall we? We can distract him with the fish. And he just walks away perfectly. I'm Queen Beatrice, kind sir. I wish to thank you ever so much for saving our hive from the claws of that horrible bear. In return, I offer you a luscious honeycomb from our hive. Please feel free to retrieve one. I promise my bees won't harm you. It may come in handy on your travels. All right, so Queen Beatrice, I get it, it's like a bee. Uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, has allowed us free, um, a free honeycomb for saving them from the bear. Graham reaches a hand into the beehive. If and you come here before, a very oh. chunk of honeycomb, wrapping it in a protective piece of cloth. He then pockets it. There we go. If you come here before, um, whatchamacallit, uh, before getting the fish, the bear won't be here, and the bees will kill you, so yeah. Graham bends down and picks up the large stick from the ground. Yeah, we're gonna need that stick, too. Let's see, we have a stick, a honeycomb, a pie, and a wand. The perfect arsenal for our typical adventure game hero. Let's save now that we got that stuff, because pro tip, you're gonna need to save a lot in this game because this game is probably the most unforgiving game in the King's Quest series. You can die in many ways here, and it's not always obvious, and I'll explain more about that later. What's this? A bully of a dog terrorizes the poor ants as he playfully digs at their large anthill. A bully of a dog is uh, threatening the ants, eh? Well, I know I've distracted a dog. Let's play fetch with him, why not? For the stick we picked up. Here we go. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm King Anthony the Great. May I ask who you are? Why, certainly. I'm King Graham of Daventry, and this is my friend, Cedric. We're seeking a way to cross the Great Mountains to the ocean on the other side. That is a very perilous undertaking. I wish you would reconsider. But if you shall not, in return for rescuing our home from that flea bitten cur, I wish to offer you our help, if perchance you may ever need it. Thank you very much, King Antony. Cedric and I appreciate your kind offer. 
We look forward to meeting you again. All right, and now King Antony, like Queen Beatrice, King Antony. Apparently, there's a freaking monarchy of uh, punny animal names. Uh, has allowed us to, um, well, he's thanked us anyway for saving him from the dog. His uh, help won't be obvious until a little later, but he will help us. Actually, might be pretty soon too. Ah, uh, we don't have to deal with these guys right now. We have Rumpelstiltskin and his son right here, but they won't be of any help to us until later, later on in the game, so we won't deal with them right now. Let's actually, yeah, now let's go back to the inn. Because, actually, now, if we really want to, we can use King Anthony's help right here. We have a pile of hay. Let's take a look through it. Graham watches with surprise as a contingent of ants marches into the haystack and begins to swarm through it. There we go. For helping King Antony, he and his ants will sort through the haystack for us for anything important. There was a way that we could be of help to you. Look here. We found a gold needle in the haystack. I'd like to present it to you. Perhaps you can find a use for it. Why, thank you, King Antony. I'm honored. Good luck in your travels, King Grim. And be careful. All right. So, uh, remember the white snake fable I mentioned earlier? This is actually a lot similar to it. In the fable, um, there was an instance where a guy helped a bunch of ants from being run over, and uh, in the end, they ended up helping him with, I think, putting grain in the field. I don't remember for sure. But anyway, we got a golden needle in a haystack. Or, well, that was in a haystack, anyway. Which I'm supposed to, well, I'm going to assume is going to be quite useful to us. Uh, so, yeah, that's something. That's what we get for helping uh, King Antony. Um, so earlier when we went to town, there were three shops. There was a tailor shop, a toy shop, and a shoe shop. We have to help all three of those shops before we can complete the game. And it turns out the golden needle is actually one of the items you're going to need uh, to help the tailor in the tailor shop. So I may go do that right now. Oh, it's, there's no real rush to do it, but um, I suppose I could. I don't know. Or, or I could just explore more. I may go to the forest and take a look around there, because that's another place we can go. There's actually quite a few places we can go, and there's one place that we have to go that I'm really not looking forward to going to. Oh, uh, I think, I guess maybe we may as well go to the tailors while we're here. I mean, we're already, we're right next to the town, so why not? Uh, because the golden needle actually belongs to the tailor, so if we give it to him, uh, we will be able to get some sort of reward, I assume. It's typically how adventure games work. You give one person an item, they give you another item. Let's just mosey on into the tailor shop, I suppose. There we go. Yeah, I haven't been speaking nearly as much in this Let's Play as I have in the previous four because a lot of the characters have been doing the speaking for me. And what do we have here? May I help you, sir? Yes, you may, actually. I kind of like that uh, cloak over there. In the corner of the shop, draped casually over a tailor's form, Graham sees a thick, fur-lined cloak. Well, if we are going to go through the mountains, which uh, Crispin implied we would because Mordak Here, last me beyond the mountains, we that. may need that. Oh, that cloak fits you perfectly. It just looks wonderful on you. Wonderful. Let me tell you, it will certainly keep you toasty warm during the coming winter. Let me know if you wish to buy it. I would like to buy it, actually. Um, but we don't have any money. But perhaps we could trade in that golden needle that we found. Oops. There we go. <laughs> My golden needle. Kind of moonwalk there. Wherever did you find it? It was in a haystack by the country inn. By the inn? Oh, yes. 
I remember visiting there not long ago. Oh, vulgar man, that innkeeper. He has no scruples at all. Well, I'm glad to see you've got your golden needle back. I wonder, could you possibly see fit to give me that wonderful cloak in exchange for it? The cloak? Well, why not? It's yours. For the price of a golden needle. Thank and you, there we uh, go. sir. I'm sure it will help me on my travel. It will, I'm sure. I'm sure it will. Good luck. Au revoir. All right. Note that the tailor mentioned that the uh, innkeeper was sort of an unscrupulous man. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend going into the inn at this stage of the game like I mentioned before. And you'll see why if you go in there. I'm a, I won't go in there until we um, have to. And well, not so much have to, but when we can. So that's kind of the problem. Uh, one of the problems in this game is that some of the puzzles are not very descript. Like, the stuff we're doing right now, we're not really told that any of this stuff will help us. Though, well, then again, the cloak, we kind of know will help us with, like, the the cold uh, of the mountains. So it's a good thing we have that now. Um, uh, why Graham couldn't have kept the cloak, well, Dracula's cloak from King's Quest 2, I don't know. But uh, I don't know if that would have been very warm. I don't, I'd probably not. Because this one's a fur-lined cloak, so this is probably going to be much better, I'd assume. And we're now in the forest. Who's this gentleman? Upon a fallen log sits a dashing young prince who looks very sad and confused. A prince? Can we speak to him? Uh, excuse me, young man. Sorry to bother you, but I couldn't help but notice you sitting there on that log. I was wondering if there was anything wrong. Why, yes. As a matter of fact, there is. I've been searching everywhere for my fiance. She's a beautiful princess with long golden tresses, fetching blue eyes, and smooth, creamy skin. Have you seen her Sounds anywhere Sounds kind of like about? Melanie's when he first found her. No, sorry, I haven't seen anyone like that. That's what I figured. No one has seen her. I bet that a witch who lives in the dark forest had something to do with her disappearance. Hmm, I'll keep an eye out for her. If I see her, I'll let her know you're looking for her. I would appreciate that. Well, I guess I'd better get back to looking for her. I'm not ever going to find her just sitting around here. Thanks for your concern. Well, it seems that this prince is looking for his fiance, a princess who's gone missing. And he mentioned a witch of the dark forest. Hagatha, maybe? I don't know. She's, well, she lives in uh, Kalima. I doubt she'd be here. Oh, and then we're back here again. Actually, the whole plot between the prince and the missing princess is one I really like, and we're going to be finding out more about it right away. What do we have here? It seems as if we found a tree, which may be kind of a literal weeping willow, if you will. Let's see if we can uh, look at it. A graceful weeping willow tree grows beside a small pond created from her tears. In her branch-like arms, she clutches a beautiful harp as a child would a cherished toy. Hmm. Can we drink any of that water? <coughs> What's wrong, Graham? That's salt water! <laughs> Salt water. Well, I guess the narrator was right when it is the Weeping Willow's tears. And let's see, how long have we been going on for this episode? I don't know. Um, no, let's talk to her. Why not? Whoops. Uh, Miss Willow? Yes? You can talk? Why, of course I can. What did you expect? Well, I've never oh, seen a, tree, a talking and... tree before. What's wrong? Everything's wrong, can't you tell? I'm not really a tree. I'm really a princess. You see, my fiancé and I were walking through this wood when a nasty old witch came along and was instantly charmed by my handsome prince. When he naturally refused her advances, she jealously banished him to a faraway land and turned me into a tree. Then she stole my heart. Stole your heart? Yes. She turned my heart to gold and took it away with her. 
The only way I can become human again is to have my heart brought back. Now, all I have to cheer me up is my harp. It's quite magical, you know. It plays the sweetest music you've ever heard. Now please, leave me alone in my sorrow. Well, interesting. It appears that uh, this weeping willow was once a human, and an old witch found her, and she separated her and her fiancé and turned her into a tree. Makes me wonder, maybe she is... I don't know, this could be a long shot, but maybe she is the princess that the prince was looking for. Perhaps that's the connection? I'm not quite sure. We'll find out, I'm sure. Can we talk to her some more? Oops. Please, don't bother me anymore. Let me weep in peace. Well, I suppose not. I know she actually sings at one point, but uh, apparently not right now. So, hmm, where should we go now? Or should I end it now? Yeah, so unfortunately, we can't help her, uh, at least not right now. She had her heart stolen, and unless we can find it for some weird reason, I guess she's going to stay a tree. Oh, I do not really like the looks of this. The sign seems self-explanatory enough. Enter at your own risk. Well, I don't think we're in a position to risk that right now. Uh, at least not my uh, books. So we will not be going into that uh, very creepy looking forest yet. Uh, let's go to the east actually here. Actually, I, I'm not actually using a map this time around, so I'm kind of stumbling. I may get a wrap. Uh, I mean, a wrap. A map uh, later on so I have a better... Oh, hey, we're back at Crispin's house again. How interesting that Crispin lives right next to an incredibly dark and creepy forest. <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know, lots of people living in forests that are incredibly deadly. I don't know. Or at least next to forests that are incredibly deadly. But anyway, I guess uh, part of me is not sure. Okay, I guess I'll end this episode here. Um, I haven't been really been keeping track as well as I should have of these episodes, but next time on Let's Play King's Quest V, Absence Makes the Heart Go Yonder, we will, I think, do a part that I really am not looking forward to, but I'd like to get out of the way because it'll help us a lot in the long run, so we'll see you then.